Hello to all my lovely patrons. This episode's a little bit of a different one, and before I forget, let me do the thumbnail. Um, so this one's going to be a little confusing because the version that you're getting here is not the version that's going to end up on wherever you get your podcasts. Um, the gimmick for this one is to not upload the episode. So once housekeeping's out of the way, the episode's over. But you, you special people who give me a little extra money, you get to hear what the episode actually is. Um, so good on you. Let's get this thing rolling. And, um... I tried to find out if there's a dark mode for Google Docs because I realized there's this uh, giant glare coming off the screen. And, um, nope, not on the desktop version. Weird, huh? Anyway, let's get this thing rolling, shall we? Look, if this is your first episode of the show, this is going to be a weird one. Just do one of the other ones. And this is where the theme song goes. <clears throat> You're listening to Fix My Car Cast, hosted by Bear Claw Billy, and this is episode 76. Comedian and musician Keith Hebert will definitely, for real, 100% be joining us later. But first, housekeeping. This is the show where you pick what I say and how I say it. Pick a topic or prompt by donating to the GoFundMe and vote on the gimmick by joining my Patreon for just a dollar a month. Join at the five dollar or higher level and also get bonus episodes and behind the scenes footage. Links are in the description. Also down there, merch. Get yourself some merch. You don't gotta search for that merch. We got a link, you dink. Oops, sorry. That was mean. Excuse the profanity. No new donors this week. The total raised for paying off my car repair debt is still, still, still holding at $1,501. Also, when we get to $2,000, we unlock an automatic show gimmick, which is I will watch all the Fast and Furious movies back to back. There's like 11 of them now. And then record my podcast at the end. Extremely exhausted. Fun fact, did you know that this whole podcast disappears when we hit $3,000? Boy, let's hope we never do. Hey, do you like the theme song? No? Well, if you make a donation of $50 or more, in addition to picking an episode topic, you get to change one thing about the theme song forever. Unless somebody else changes it back. Want me to play the whole thing in reverse? Hey, that'll be super annoying, but I'll do it. 50 bucks. We have a new patron this week. Woohoo! Thank you, Joel, for subscribing at the $10 level. The $10 level is the highest level. You get all kinds of goodies at the $10 level. Goodies that I haven't been doing because we don't have anybody at the $10 level. So thank you, Joel, for being not the first $10 level, but the only current $10 level. So I guess I'll tease it here. I'm working on a new album, so if you're a $10 patron, you get a sneak peek at said album. Um, all right, now it's time for a topic suggestion. I'll suggest topics I think I could easily talk about for a whole episode, though admittedly I think the show is more fun when it's something I'm completely clueless about. So, something I could talk about is how to seduce a human being that you are attracted to. Oh, yeah. If there's one thing I'm an expert at, it's laying down the hotness on a fine specimen of the sexy persuasion. Want to know more? Donate today. Excuse me for that. I don't edit. We don't go back. A reminder, my new ambient album, Ethalog, is out on all kinds of streaming services. So please go check it out, leave a review, tell your friends, etc., etc. Check the links in the description and put it in your ears. Checking in on the best city in the world based on which city listened to the last episode the most, and we got us another singles night tie. Ties are broken by whichever city listened to the most episodes, and our big winner is... Westbrook, Maine! Congratulations, Westbrook, Maine! Hey, you did it! Let it be known that your Agrodome, Smokatorium, and Grand Hall of Justice are the best in the world for seven days. Last episode, I attempted to recite all the Back to the Future dialogue from memory. 
Some of them are just for me. You can see video of me attempting this over on Patreon. Also, head over to Patreon for a bonus episode where I talk about the huge mistake I made for the first time in the podcast history. I've heard it's a rite of passage for every podcast, so the fact that I made it 75 episodes before making this mistake, wild. Okay. Let's talk next week's gimmick poll. These are your choices for next week's episode gimmick. They are draw a bicycle, do an old-timey prospector voice, speak in iambic pentameter, and answer anonymous NGL questions. I'll explain that one in a bit. Uh, Let's go over them again. Number one, draw a bicycle. Number two, do an old-timey prospector voice. Number three, speak in iambic pentameter. And number four, answer anonymous NGL questions. If you're not aware, NGL is this thing where you can anonymously submit questions. Typically, people answer them on social media. But I've put a link up, and I'll also put it in the description of this episode... I've put a link up where you can ask your anonymous questions, completely anonymous, and I'm not going to look at them until that episode airs. Unless something else wins, and then it's all for mood, I'll answer them later. But but yeah, I'm going to keep the app closed for a whole week, and then open it on the show. Um, Sorry if that one's confusing. I think it's a really fun idea, though, so I want people to understand it. Um, Anyway, there are no returning gimmicks because y'all ain't voting. Remember that any gimmick that gets just a single vote is eligible for a second chance in six weeks. So vote for the one you really want, even if it doesn't win. Be sure to vote over on Patreon. The poll closes Thursday, June 22nd at noon Eastern America time. Hey... That's three days before my birthday. Money, please. All right, time for today's gimmick, which is... <laughs> record the episode, but don't release it. That's right. You're about to not hear the missing episode of Fix My Car Cast. Of course, gimmicks don't start until housekeeping is out of the way in case any of them prevent me from sharing vital information. But now, we are entering... The Gimmick Zone! (sighs) From this point on, gimmicks are active and everything is improvised. There's no sponsored topic for today's episode, so I'll take inspiration from a randomized Wikipedia page, which is... I forgot to queue up random Wikipedia page before I started recording. But guess what? Nobody can hear this. And by nobody, I mean you, you special cutie. You can hear this because you gave me money. You're a good person for giving me money. I'm stalling, but I'm not doing the thing I'm stalling for. Let's go find a random Wikipedia page, shall we? Ah, uh, I, I always have the link open and ready to go, but not this time. All right. Oh, what are you doing to me, Google? Yeah, just open it. Okay. Well, it always opens on a random Wikipedia page, but I always click next just so I don't get any extra, you know, time to look at it. So we almost could have had microceratus, but I am going to hit it now. And today's topic is hopefully more interesting than micro microceratus. It is Jacob Parker. Oh boy! (laughs) Oh boy, it's a sports one. All right. Well, friends, today we're going to learn all about Jacob Parker, or it will remind me of something from my past and I'll just tell a story about sports, probably basketball. All right, friends. Well, here's something that you all should be excited to learn. I never know what the angle to do is that you can see the screen, but you can also see me Um, I really, you know, I'm not rich, as you can guess by the fact that I run a podcast where I beg for money, um, in a way that some have described as fun and others have described as manipulative and I want no part of it. (laughs) Well, my other option is don't do the podcast and get no money. Anyway, America. Hey, speaking of America, Jacob Parker is an American basketball player. Cool. I don't. I, I. I'm so curious what team he was on. Um, I hope you can see the screen. By the way, I, I forgot to like adjust the balance for for this. Um, it's it's so funny. 
I feel like the whole tone of the show has changed because this one's not going out to the masses. And when I say the masses, I mean roughly four times the amount of people who hear it on my Patreon because let's get real here, people. This show does not pull in the listeners, or at least it hasn't yet. Um, Hey, I'm supposed to be talking about Jacob Parker, but instead I'm talking about the podcast. And I'm fascinated by this psychological effect, the fact that almost nobody will hear this. Um, And even the people who do listen to the podcast are almost nobody. They're not nobodies. They're cool somebodies. But... But yeah, uh, the the whole mood feels different here. I just kind of want to get like introspective with you, which is what I do on the bonus episodes. What is this show? It's about Jacob Parker, the basketball player. If you didn't know, he was born July 9th, 1993. Hey, that's coming right up. Early happy birthday, Jacob Parker. He competed collegiately for the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks. Go Lumberjacks! That is a great name for a team. Um, where I live, Columbus, Ohio, Maine, um, our local team used to be the Pirates, and then we were the Mariners, so I like that we took the evil off a little bit. Like, oh, we're not stealing your stuff, we're just enjoying the sea. I'm always fascinated by regional team names. Our hockey, yeah, our hockey team is the Mariners. Um, sorry, our basketball team is the Red Claws, and our baseball team is the Sea Dogs. So, definitely ocean theme going on for all of that. Gee, I wonder why. Probably because Maine touches the ocean. But why are we talking about Maine sports when we could be talking about Parker, who was named Southland Conference Player of the Year in 2014? Go, Jacob! I'm so proud of you. I really hope there isn't a controversy section of this article. But right now, Jacob, awesome job with the basketball. On July 29th, 2015... Uh, Parker signed a contract with Slovenian champions, K, uh, apologies if I don't pronounce this correctly, KK Sintjer of the Telemach League and the ABA League. Friends, that's the whole article, so I'm gonna have to jump off from this one. We are in full ASCAT territory. Not to ever admit that I steal the format of things, but, um, welcome to the Chris Gethard Show. <laughs> I may have talked about that in a previous episode, but yeah, after I came up with the whole gimmick of like, there's a topic and a gimmick, I realized, oh shit, that's just the Chris Gethard show, but without my really hot wife in the band. Um, I do have a hot wife, um, but she uh, hasn't talked to me for a while, but that's okay. She's she's on her own journey. Um, So... I am going to talk about this. Uh, So believe it or not, even though I know almost nothing about sports and straight up, I'm going to stop showing you the actual Wikipedia article because that's how short it is. Um, Well, on the, on the plus side, there's no, there's no controversies, Jacob Parker. So good job, Jacob Parker. Um, But believe it or not, this does get into something that I want to talk about as someone who doesn't really care about sports in any sense um, outside of marble sports and wrestling, which I feel like are the two ways to make sports interesting. Number one, make it true random and remove the human element altogether, marble sports, or script the damn thing because, like, sports is not a story and I'm here for a story and I don't know how to get invested in ball goes in hole. Like, I mean, like, there's just, like, I don't know. I feel like I I look at it in too much of a of a of a micro event way where it's like, "Oh, somebody trips." And it's like, "Well, they didn't mean to trip." Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm not explaining this the right way, but like it blows my mind how much sports fans just like lose their shit over thing went in a thing. Um and uh, in the in in terms of storytelling, um God, one of my favorite recent Rick and Morty jokes is when um, they 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 trap like a villain whose whole deal is ruining stories. They trap him in like a prison made of sports, which makes no fucking sense outside of metaphor. Um, but they're like, sports is the opposite of a story. And it's like, yeah, that's why I can't get invested in it. Like to get invested in sports, I have to play a character who gives a shit which team wins. And I don't feel it authentically at all. The most I get is excited for my friends who want to see them win. Um, I used to host Super Bowl parties where at the door you flipped a coin to find out which team you were rooting for. And then you had to like 
go up to 11 on your enthusiasm for this team winning, even though you did not give a shit, because let's be honest, I'm here for the food. My favorite genre of food is Super Bowl, um, which I would make the title of this episode, but this one has to be fully a secret. Shh, shh. That's my little triangle of silence, not to be confused with the cone of silence from Get Smart. What the hell are we talking about? It was Jacob Parker, but we're on a whole thing now. Um, yeah, I cannot bring myself to be excited for sports. Now, there's a pretty low chance that anyone I've been to a sporting event with is hearing this. I don't think any of them them are patrons, but they could be someday. So, I have enjoyed going to sports with them, and it is exciting to see the crowd get excited. If anything, that's the story I'm injecting into sports is how excited the crowd gets. It means so much to them. And it's like, I get it, I get it, it's symbolism. Storytelling is also symbolism. You see the story, you project yourself onto the story. So I guess that's what sports fans are doing too. They're projecting themselves onto the team, and that team's wins are their wins, and that team's losses are their losses. I guess on some level I get that. It's just too bare bones for me to get invested. I want a little panache. I want a little razzle-dazzle on this thing. And again, that's what wrestling is. Wrestling is, hey, we're taking the format of sports, but there's like a storyline to follow. Um, And I should point out, I am very new to wrestling. Um, I got invited to watch WrestleMania at a friend's house like, I don't know, four or five years ago. I don't know what time is because pandemic. Um, Oh no, I said pandemic. Oh, the results for this are going to plummet. Ah, I've also said it twice. I shouldn't say it a third time because a certain character will show up. A character that I think only listeners of the bonus episodes know about. So let's not say that word again. Anyway, yeah, I I started getting into wrestling about, yeah, about five years ago, I think. I went to a WrestleMania. Um... And it was super fun. They put uh, a marker board up where you could make predictions about um, about what would happen at WrestleMania. And I was like, ooh, interesting. Um, I made a Hail Mary silly prediction as someone who knows nothing about wrestling. And it happened. Everyone in the room was shocked. Um... I don't remember which WrestleMania number it was. Um, Honestly, I think it was right before uh, John Oliver did an entire episode about how corrupt uh, WWE is. And um, it was unfortunate to start learning about that stuff the more I got into wrestling. Um, But yeah, pretty terrible. Vince McMahon sounds like a horrible human being. Um, Maybe he and Lorne Michaels should fuck off into the sun together and someone who's not awful can run both of those things. Of course, you know the other thing that Lorne Michaels runs, right? SNL. It's SNL. Um, I would have put a joke there, but I couldn't think of anything else he produced fast enough. Late Night with Conan O'Brien, I think. Anywho, probably Late Night with Seth Meyers, too. How are we on Seth Meyers when we're talking about Jacob Parker? Eventually I will get to the main thing I want to talk about, but I feel like you need to know my relationship with sports first. Why is this one flowing so easily? I don't know. There's just something about knowing that almost nobody's going to hear this. Dear Diary, I don't like sports. Um, Not to be confused with the Huey Lewis album, which is okay. Um... But anyway, which reminds me of American Psycho, which reminds me of Phil Collins, which we're not going there. Done with that guy. Not Phil Collins, but the person from my past who is obsessed with Phil Collins. Um, Right, what was I talking about? Uh, Sports. Okay, so, um, yeah, sports I just can't get into. Like, I watch watch friends watch sports and get, like, super about it winning the hole. And, like, all I can think is, like, if there were no humans and I just set up two goals and just rolled a soccer ball, and this is the one you like and this is the one you don't, would you still go, whoa? No, you wouldn't because you're projecting yourself onto the team. But, again, I just don't have the ability to do that. I can't project myself onto the team. But then... If you made up a story about, well, one of the teams went through this hardship and one of the other teams is evil, suddenly I'm in. I mean, what the hell is the MCU if not wrestling, you know? 
Um, and you know, I, I love, I love comics. I like the MCU. I like comics more than the MCU because they're like actually interesting and do more interesting things. Um, that said, I still watch every MCU thing that comes out. MCU, we're talking about sports. Let's go from MCU to NBA. So where I want to go with all of this, looking at the clock and knowing that I have about 10 minutes left before we can call this a 30 minute episode, but time doesn't matter. I'm not uploading this to Buzzsprout, the service that I use for $12 a month um, and gives me three hours of upload time. So I'm not going to lie, this episode was a little bit of a personal gimmick to not eat up so much time. Um, Right, NBA. It's in the game. (laughs) Um, So where I'm going with all of this is the fact that this American who went to Stephen F. Austin College, born in Bixby, Oklahoma, is now on the Slovenian team? This actually gets to the heart of something that made me not like sports even more when I was a kid. Despite not liking sports, I did watch the Olympics, and it's probably no surprise I liked the artsy events. I liked, you know, the floor exercises. I liked the ones that had some artistry to them. Figure skating. I loved watching figure skating with my mom. It was one of my favorite things. Every now and again, I'll fall back into the figure skating hole. Like, you know, it's just, it's graceful and elegant and interesting and not just put skate in hole. Um, not that I wouldn't watch something where you have to throw a skate into a hole. Um, that actually sounds fun. Invented sports, I'm all about. But one thing I learned was, uh, as a kid, and I don't have the information right here in front of me, so we're just kicking it off the top of the old thinking nugget. Um, a skier from Texas which is in America, which is on Earth, played for the Japanese skiing team in one of the Olympics. I believe I could have this backwards. Um, But that blew my tiny little mind. Um, I believe it was a Dateline NBC story about athletes who are not from the nation that they are representing. And there's a lot of them. And I remember thinking, then what's the point? Um, if you can just go to any team, regardless of where you're born, why even base it on your geographic region? And you, as a fan of said people from geographic region, should be boycotting this. They shouldn't take players that aren't from the region they're playing for. Like, that to me is the ultimate, okay, so none of this matters, what are we doing here? Like, not that I even care about any particular geographic region proving itself to be the best, but, like, I now have one notch lower of giving a shit. (laughs) Like, you could make a team called These Are Billy's Friends. (laughs) And I'd be like, wait, I don't know half of these people. That's what it feels like. It's like, why is the team called Billy's Friends if they're not? Again, look at how every time I try to inject story and meaning and purpose and philosophy into sports, it matters so much to me. Like, oh, two people come here to try to win. Okay. I'm also going to say, I feel like I actually get sports when it's you and a buddy doing a sport. Like, I... I love to, you know, shoot hoops or or board games. I love board games. But, like, also, like, you know, I, uh, admittedly, I don't really like to exert myself. Um, and I'll throw it out there because injuries are bad and this is America and it's hard to get health care. Straight up, whenever somebody invites me to anything physical, I'm like, mm, pass. Partly because I'm the fat one, I'm the slowest at everything. Um, and it's annoying. People, like, try to hide it. Okay. When you're on a hike with a fat friend, you don't start moving again when the fat friend catches up. You take five, okay? Little tidbit for you. Um, But yeah, I just, I, I don't, I just, I feel like sports were ruined for me the day people showed up to watch them. I feel like I got the point of them until there were spectators, and now it's become about nothing but the spectators. And that's where I just lose it. Like, 
Um, so I think a lot about being an eccentric billionaire. Um, uh, it, side note, if you haven't read The Magic Christian by Terry Southern, uh, really fun book. Um, it's like shitpost the book. Um, it's literally just about a guy with a lot of money who pulls wild pranks on people. Um, the Magic Christian is the name of a boat. I feel like the title, like, off puts a lot of people. Um, he just tried to think of the silliest name for a boat. Um, but every time I recommend that, uh, book to people, they immediately are like, oh, is this gonna be, like, making fun of religion? Um, no, not really. Um, but anyway, were I an eccentric billionaire, I would love to buy two teams... And completely switch the players. And just watch people wrestle with that. Because we've seen the meltdown they have just when their team name's not a slur anymore. What kind of meltdown would they have if it was just, so these are the teams now, who are you rooting for? And I know you're like, well, they would just stick with who they're loyal to. And they would go, some dumb billionaire is being a dumb billionaire. When are they not? Um, But I just, the, the sheer thought experiment of it is what I want to see. And and by the way, you can throw this back in my face and be like, oh yeah, well, okay, take something you like. What if Doctor Doom became Iron Man? They did that. Comics do shit like that. Anyway, yeah, it's like um, whenever a big player, uh, Tom Brady, I don't know who he plays for now or if he plays for anybody, I don't know. Like, it's just kind of weird whenever like a star player moves to another team. It's like, so who, what were you loyal to? And the answer is a shirt. You're loyal to a jersey. You're loyal to team colors. Hell, mascots I get. Whenever I go to a hockey game or a baseball game with my friends, I'm all about the mascot. I'm also about the food. And I'm also about being a little to a lot stoned. <laughs> um, that's another way to make sports interesting and fun. Um... You didn't hear that from me, though. And in fact, it's pretty likely you didn't hear that at all. It's been really fun to do an episode where I'm just kind of talking to myself, but also to you wonderful people. And maybe that's what we need to go out on. You know what's a true slam dunk? Joining my Patreon and supporting me, a really talented person who can't seem to catch a break in this crazy mixed up world. Thanks for listening, everybody. I think you've earned this one. Anyway, next week, something else. We'll see what it is. As always, play for the geographic region that you grew up in. It's so weird to mentally, like, feel that as being the ending of the show, but... Mmm... The show hasn't ended, because the Patreon version always goes a little bit extra. Um, I did not really talk about the topic that much, but again, they didn't give me much to go on. Um, What is the ABA League? I'm curious about this. Admiral Bet, Men's, Slovenia, Europe. Okay, so it's Europe. So yeah, this is an American player who went and played in Europe. Huh. Well, that was interesting. Um, friends, I don't want this to end. There's a there's a cool kind of intimacy to this, and I really like it. Um, I don't know why. This one was very interesting for me psychologically. It's, it's going to be hard to not upload the episode, but I, ca- I can't break the gimmick. I can't break kayfabe. Um, I don't know. I feel so relaxed and calm. Because uh, this is only being listened to by people who, like, really, really care. Uh, That or they just worry about me and they're giving me money and they don't actually watch any of the special features. Um, But that's okay. I don't want to end this. This has been a lovely time I've shared with you, patrons. Thanks for your support, as always. I hope it was worth joining my Patreon to hear this. And now you know how I really feel about sports. I am so... So glad I got to talk about something I genuinely care about. Horrible traitor, Jacob Parker. (laughs) 